Welcome everybody, I'm Kathy Arbor and today we'll be painting a sunset with um, a figure in a boat touching the water. Uh, I'll put the picture up right here. And today we're going to be working on just um, one of these canvas boards. And it, this is a 9 by 12. So they're fairly inexpensive, so for people that are just starting out, um, you can either work on these. If you want to get a, a canvas, you can do that. And you can also get canvas paper that's in a paper pad. So I'll leave it up to you what you want to do. So I've, I'm actually going to, this is a Conte uh, pastel. And I'm just going to mark my horizon line here. So this part is going to be the sky, and then this is the water area. So the, this will let me know um, where it'll the transition will happen. So today I'm using artist grade quality, and this is a mix of golden and also Atelier um, interactive paints. These are awesome paints if you can get a hold of them because you can actually reconstitute them with a special spray and fix something, which is <laughs> really awesome. So, what we have here is cerulean blue, raw umber, carbon black, titanium white, orange, uh, cadmium orange, I believe, and cadmium yellow. And this is um, quinacridone red for a bit of the sunset. Uh, I probably will also use a bit of a glazing medium. You can um, use whatever brand you want. I tend to like golden, but I'm sure if you're used to any of the other glazes, uh, go ahead and use those. And this glazing uh, medium is just used so that the paint will um, go on smoother. It won't have a drag. <clears throat> so first of all, I want to do my sky. I'm just going to put some glazing medium right here. So here's my empty palette. I just use um, food um, container lids. <laughs> they work best for me. So what I want to do is I'm going to wet the top of this. We're going to start with the very top for beginning. And the reason why I'm wetting it is because it'll give me um, better coverage without the paint dragging. Uh, you could use um, the medium too if you want. Uh, just a little bit though because the, uh, the um, glazing medium does take a little longer to dry. Okay, so we'll take some orange and um, this is just going to be your base coat. And let's see, we'll add some yellow to that, maybe some white. I want a fairly, not really harsh orange. Um, maybe a little more yellow. Yellow it up. So just mix to the color you want. Okay. So the orangest part, actually. It's just down here. So I'm just going to add some here. Actually, I'm probably going to go down here too because we can remark it. And I'm going to add a little bit darker as I go down. So, so see how nice this goes on? Um, I use just cheap brushes for this type of work. So these are the dollar store brushes you can get or you can go to Home Depot and, and they're just a 
basic bristle brush. Okay, so now I think I'm going to add again just a bit of white and I'm going to come up here and then what happens is I'm just going to rinse that brush out a bit. Have a big bucket of water too. And I'm going to add a little bit of blue just to the corner here. And it's kind of a gray looking um, color that you get. Maybe a little bit of red. Kind of a grayish purple. And then I want to add a little blue on the top. And just blend that down. There's a little bit more on one side that you can see. So I just add a little bit of blue into it as I go. And then it gets a little more um, brownish orange, I guess you could say, in here. Okay. So I'm just rinsing out my brush. I'm going to squeeze out all the water. And then you can just go in and I want it fairly light right in here because this is where the sun is. Okay. And then down, down on the bottom part, right in here, this is, uh, it's about here. Put a line of this color. Maybe add a little bit of red to it. And this is going to be your horizon line. We'll make that a little bit darker. And we can just add a little of that color in this area here. This is just, remember, it's just a the beginning, the base of your painting. All right. So we'll let that dry. So now it's good and dry. Make sure yours is very dry because if it's not, when you go to put more acrylic paint on, it'll actually lift what you've already painted. Not a good thing. So, in the clouds, it's kind of an overcast day, but a bit of a break in the clouds down here. And this is where the sun is setting or rising, whatever you want to um, view it as. So I want to take some more titanium white. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put some in here. And I'm going to add just a hint of yellow to the white. Uh, when you're doing this, just very small amounts. 
because the any cadmium um, paint is very very strong now you don't want a really um, loaded brush you want to squeeze some of it out and what you want to do is find the area that you, you're going to do your sun spot. So I'm going to have it right here. Matter, matter of fact, I think I'll add a little white right there. Then you take your mix of white and a bit of yellow and start doing some uh, dry brushing, basically, around in the clouds. And it's a very, very light-handed action. Because you're just basically wanting to <clears throat> make this area your lightest part. I have some clouds down here, so we'll have some hard edges along the clouds that are... Um, in here. There's a few up here. So I'll just kind of scum, scumble. <laughs> and maybe a little more here. It's a little brighter. Bring it down into the this area. Now this is when you can add a little bit of your glazing. Just touch your the tip. Squeeze some of it out. And just do circular motions just to blend that out a bit. Add a little bit more white there. just a little bit brighter there. So. And we'll, we'll add to this, so it might look kind of what they say, the ugly stage <laughs> for a bit. Don't worry, we'll get to it. It'll work out. Just blend that out a bit. Okay. I'm just rinsing my brush. And I want to take out as much of the water. Hopefully you can... There we go. I think I need to lift that up for you. Let's see. Get something. I'll just put this paper roll under it reason it's not like in the there all right then we want to take some of this orange that we mixed up and we want to gray it a little bit more so Take some cerulean blue and some raw umber again. I'm going to mix a little bit of white with it. So we get this grayish color. And now we want to take the edge of your brush and just lightly, well that's still too too similar. Let's do some blue in it. 
make it more blue. You want to be able to notice it. You don't want it really, really uh, dark, but you do want it to be noticeable. And you just um, go in a swirling motion very lightly. And you make your clouds. Now these clouds aren't really definite. You kind of just blend it into the sky. This is your painting. You can skies change <laughs> by the second. So if you're finding you don't want this type of sky, do something else. It's all, this is just a reference. It doesn't mean you have to go exactly to it. It's just a reference. I'm going to take a little bit of this and make it more on the orange side for down here. When we get closer to the sun, in the clouds, it gets more orange. Take some of that off onto a cloth so we can gradually blend it in. Might have a little bit of bright brightness on the edges of the clouds. You can put that in if you want. Make it a little brighter. You just um, do whatever shape you want. You make them streaky. You can make them uh, a little fuller. It's up to you, really. I'm going to put a little bit of this down here where the clouds are just coming over the horizon. And don't worry about um, the tree line or, or a little, little bit of uh, hill or whatever that is in the in the picture we can put that in later that'll be the last thing you you uh, put in okay I think I'm gonna make mine a little bit bluer maybe in here a little bit white I'm going to just add some, a little bit of lighter grayish blue. <laughs> I 
in here. Just to give a little interest. You just scumble is what it's called. If you're not sure if you like it, don't overwork it. If you're you're not too sure whether it's what you want, let it dry and then go have a cup of tea or coffee or whatever and then come back. Sometimes you just need to view it with new eyes. I need a little bit of medium on my brush here. And it's just very small amounts of, of um, the glazing medium. You don't need a lot. Just a smidge. I'm just adding a few little lighter cloud um, edges. Just where the um, brightest part of the clouds would be. in here a little bit of orange with the white Be just a little bit brighter in some of these. If you go over that white part with some of this orange, it um, brightens it up significantly just because it's a white instead of the um, darker colors that you've been using on it. Okay, now, I still think I need some more, <clears throat> a little bit more um, light clouds here. So I'm still going to um, use some of this. I've dipped my brush into that glazing medium. And I'm, 
and it still needs to be a little bit lighter. Let's see, yeah, that's better. So it's kind of like hazy clouds, really. There's a haziness about it. The nice thing about the um, glazing medium is it, it makes it much smoother looking. Um, if you're one that really doesn't like the look of the canvas grain on it, then um, this stuff works great. Just a little bit of a... just brightens, gives it more dimension. I might even put some in around here. You kind of graze this a bit. Um, Okay, so there's our sky. And we can always go back and touch things up if you find you want something else later. Sometimes after you put your darker colors in, you see you might want to improve something. So with this water here, there's an awful lot of kind of a, a very soft peach color. So I'm going to take this, this um, white here and I'm going to add just a smidge of yellow to it. Maybe just a bit of bit more white. I'll just put it here. It's almost it's a very odd shade. It's almost buff actually. You could use your titanium buff. Now, you can do this in a few different ways. You can use a very thin um, brush. Let's see. It's got a chiseled edge. Or you can use a palette knife. Now, I'm going to show you um, the palette knife. We'll use this because we'll show you with the... And you want to put some of this on the palette knife. And then where the sun is, you want to start putting lines down. So
and they're fairly close together in the horizon part and then they start to get a little less as you go down they're spaced further apart So with the chisel, this is a bright, you want to load up your, make sure it's got enough paint on it, and you can just lightly streak it. You can just dab if you want. Ever so lightly, though. Now, as we get down closer, it gets um, much wider and this is you can almost see a pattern in it and this is when you can start playing with patterns in the water I should have mixed some more of that up now pay attention to your colors too because you will see um, possibly a change in the tone like I think this one is a little bit more orange could even go into the yellow don't get too carried away with it though You can add more later. If you decide you don't like it, you can always add more later. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this for now and let it dry. We have the girl that's in the rowboat. Now I've uh, made a drawing on some paper. So I'm going to dry this, make sure it's very good and dry. And then I'm going to take some um, carbon paper and I'm going to trace this out so I know where to put my shadows. So now I'm going to um, take my paper and we're going to trace this out. So you can, um, I got a piece of, of tape on the top so I can lift it if I need to. Um, you can take a, a pen or one of these um, I can't think of what an all maybe no not an all uh, they're for embossing and just follow the line of your figure and the boat whatever it is 
see if I got it all. Yep. Okay, now I can take that off. I have my outline. This is a lot easier than trying to paint around it. Now, mind you, you probably could, but I did get some. Uh, let's see if I can wipe that off. A little bit of carbon left on there. You can just wipe it off as long as your um, painting is dry. You should be able to. That's going to be. There we go. All right. So now we can um, paint in this area. So I'm going to paint it in. Um, with a bit of black and you could use burnt umber and cerulean blue too is always a nice combination for this and I'm going to take a filbert brush so if I were to use this with some um, raw umber It makes a nice dark color. Sometimes this is a little nicer than if you were to use um, just a straight black. Because black is kind of a flat color. It doesn't give dimension where if you use it this way with a little umber and Cerulean blue or ultramarine blue would be another one. It just looks a little nicer. Go with a smaller brush for the detailed areas. So just uh, paint in the dark because this is a silhouette. Now um, sometimes depending on how the sun or even the moon um, is shining on an object it can it can sometimes leave a, a little uh, highlight on the edge of the object so it could say the top of this arm here could have a bit of a highlight. So I kind of kind of like doing that every once in a while. Um, just gives a little bit more um, interest. But you don't have to do it. I'm just putting a little bit of the uh, glazing medium just so that the brush has an easier time moving. Sometimes this thick paint can drag your brush a bit and uh, it's a little harder getting the paint on. Or you could dip your your brush in water too. Just don't do a lot of water because it will um, degrade your paint. And if you have too much water, it can actually fall off your canvas. <laughs> that wouldn't be good. But that would like have to be a huge amount of water. Now you can actually do um, acrylics like the uh, watercolor, but you have to be very careful and I wouldn't do it on a canvas. 
um, I would probably do it on paper because then it soaks into the paper. Because with the canvas, you're priming it, so it's basically just sitting on top of your canvas. Okay, I need to really get this finger in here. I don't want it too long. This can be wiggly because it's in the water, so you're going to get a little bit uh, a distorted appearance of, of what the reflection is. So don't um, get too <laughs> worried about whether it looks right or not. Okay. Now I can do a little bit of a face, and then we'll work on the water. Now we go a little more paint in that. I got too much water on my brush. Let that dry. If it's not dark enough, you can always go back. All right. Now, if you look at the picture, the reference, you'll see a lot of um, darks and stuff. Um, I'm going to use the same for the boat as you can see that there's a real definite darkness in this part up on the side here you want to leave a little bit of an indication of where the the um, shapes of the laps of the boat are just so that you can uh, <laughs> know where to put stuff. And then we're going to just paint this right in, right here. Is it because it's so dark? And then we're going to take a palette knife and put in the highlights. It's very, very dark down here. I should have enough of this color. This one comes right up into the And then this here is pretty well all black or brown. So I'm just going to paint this in. I'm going to leave a little bit of a line here just so I know where the edge of the boat is. Make some more of this. You can come back in with lighter colors 
to go over top. That's the nice thing about acrylics is you can go over top of this. And I'm going to just put a bit of of a lightness. It gets a little bit lighter in here. So it just All right, I'm going to take that small brush again because we have that. Little mountain. Oh, actually, it's up here. Why is I got that? Yeah, it's on the wrong spot. Well, I'm going to put it up here anyways. See, improvise. Don't fuss. If remember, these are just references. Make your own, change it up. You can always um, fix that. Okay, so now the reflection of that is in the water, but it's very, very, very slight. So I'm going to take another um, palette knife. Um, I'm just going to use this one here. Oh, wait a minute. There's one with a point. And... I'm going to load my, and you just want, actually, I was just going to take that out first. Um, let's see if that comes off. Let's just touch and then there's just a few here and there. Just see a few little dabs here and there. All right. Now with our brush, I'm 
let's take some of this and along here you'll notice that um, right in here it's kind of a uh, very orangey rust color I guess you would call it so I'm going to take some of my um, some more green or some a little bit of red mix it in there maybe a bit of yellow there nice mm. there kind of a reddish um, color and I'm just gonna go along the borders of this the top I don't know what you call it the top part of the <laughs> the boat and this here has a bright part too And then just brush some then we got some more Of this color again it's just kind of playing back and forth with your reference so on the bottom of here there's a very definite um, line And on the bottom here and then there's areas where it kind of just it's kind of a dry brush look to it put some on this part, this top part of this part of the boat here on the bottom here Some of it in the water even. Then brush it across here. Same with this one here. kind of has some wear and tear to it and 
maybe just a little just a smidgen in there um All right, now let's take <clears throat> let's take some of that orange again. Mix it with a little bit of yellow, and we're going to highlight just lightly dry brush it. Some areas might be a little more yellow here. That one's got a little more. And a little bit more of this and maybe a little bit of black we want some really dark dark um, under here And right here, there's some areas that are dark, too. You have some just play with it. And her shadow over arm is there right under there and maybe a few a few little dabs here and there just to show the roughness of the a little bit of yellow All right, then let's do some water. So in this area, there's 
um, reflections actually off of the boat. So you kind of have to do a bunch of squigglies. Try and, and look at your, your reference, though. Um, there is a certain pattern to it. You don't have to be exact, but... take this off this area in here is kind of it's not quite as dark as that part here Depends how detailed you want to get, actually. I'm just adding a bit of um, carbon black to the very corner here, where it's very, very dark. It's in deep shadow. So I don't want um, any kind of indication that there's anything there. You just go over it with black. Just um, basically dry brush over top. And we're going to take some more. We'll mix up a little bit of this. Um, let's see, I need some more orange. More of that light color, a little bit of yellow in it. And then I want to take that and just add a few little highlight areas. And in here it gets a little bit thicker with this color. So it's really just a go back and forth till you like it. It's just paint, so just keep doing it till you like it. 
Now I'm, I can go back over her arm, so I'm not worried about that. I need some more dark for that. And I'll just use my brush and color in some of those uh, areas that aren't quite covered enough. Your face will need a little bit. And if you find you know, if this is not working out for you, paint over it. Just go over the whole thing and start over again. I do that with um, paper and canvas. If I don't like it, I just paint right over it. That way you don't have to worry about wasting a canvas if it doesn't turn out. Um, I know a lot of people have high expectations. And when it doesn't work out the first time, they give up. Because they're not going to want to spend X amount of dollars on a new canvas. So... Don't let that stop you. Just cover it with gesso. That's the great thing about gesso. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to make this area here smoother. And I can do it. So it's... In the um, photograph, it's showing it more on the yellow side. Yeah. That's better. 
getting to be a, a bit too busy. Like I said, you can keep doing this and playing with it <laughs> over and over if you want. We can anything you need to touch up you can do now um, let's see we can maybe those I don't know what these are, whether they're clouds, could be storm clouds, they could be bit on her finger right there a few shadows And I think I'm just going to put a little bit of black in here, swirling, just to indicate that there is water here. There. And let's see, what else? I think we can fix this up a little bit. Glazing medium. Bit of yellow in there, I think. I think. Here. So just you play with it, really. Um, so let's try that. All right, I think it's done. So there's the water. And 
the sky. I think it turned out pretty good. So I hope you enjoyed this and we'll be doing a lot more of these different types of um, landscapes, whatever. If you got any ideas you'd like to have me try, just let me know. Have a good day.